Shalom and welcome to Torah Portion Shof Team. My name is Peter and this is my son, Kellen. And we are here to encourage you to read Torah in Hebrew. Help you get closer to God's written word, Torah, and his living word, Yeshua. This is again the congregation uh, Hebrew class that it all started. And you may recognize some people from a previous video is Anne at your far left, and then Vani and Chris behind me. But we have three brand new people also, and that's Catherine right here, and then Mona and Jean. Now, Catherine, Mona, and Jean are brand new and probably won't be reading any verses today. They're, they're brand new to Hebrew. 
Uh, but the others are gonna gonna be reading for us. So I hope you have a lot of fun and enjoy this. Here are our resources. You can read my book. If you've been putting in 10 to 20 hours a week, this might be the time to go ahead and get that BHS tag. Memorize this chart. If you're seeing this video on how to read Hebrew Torah for the first time, go back to the beginning, back to Bereshit on our videos page of TorahInMyHeart.com and also the video How to Read Hebrew Starting Now. This is too complicated to jump in right at this point, so go back to the beginning. Hebrews 8 says that in the New Covenant, God will write his law on our heart. And that is quoted directly from Jeremiah 31, where God will write his law on our heart in the New Covenant. And the word for law there is Torah. Yeshua said that there are many people who are going to say, Lord, Lord, did we not prophesy in your name, in your name, cast out many demons and perform many miracles? And then he'll say, I never knew you. Away from me, you anamia. That word anamia means against law. And which law could that be but Torah? So we want to take Torah seriously. If you remember our first Hebrew tank, Constance, her husband is Jeffrey. They moved to Texas about a year ago. And he posted on Facebook this week from Tom Bradford of TorahClass.com. This is what Moses says as a reply to what the Lord demands of his people. Serve him, love him, obey his Torah, walk in his paths, and revere him. I changed the order of these a little bit from what Tom had because this acronym spells out slower. If you've been reading Torah in Hebrew and you've been spending hours a week doing it, then you know this is exactly what is probably said over a hundred times. This is what God expects of us, is to serve, love, obey, walk, and revere him. And the acronym SLOWER helps to remember those things. And one advantage of reading Torah in Hebrew is you have to go very slow. And so you pick up more than when you used to race through it in English. Now we'll read some verses from Torah portion Shoftim, beginning with Deuteronomy chapter 16, verse 18. Shoftim, veshoturim titen lecha bechal she'erecha asher Adonai elohecha noten lecha. Lishvatecha veshaftu et ha'am mishpat tzedek. Judges and officers you shall put for yourself in all your gates, which Hashem, your God, is giving to you for your tribes, and they shall judge the people with righteous judgment. Talking with Catherine today, she really likes the ancient Hebrew and the meanings of the letters, and this is a big help if you remember it for these. Shafat is the sheen, which means to destroy, the pay, which means mouth, and the tet, which is serpent. So the job of a judge is to destroy the mouth of the serpent. And shoter is sheen to destroy, tet, snake, and resh, head. So the job of the officer is to destroy the head of the serpent. Lo tate mishpat, lo takir panim, velo tikach shochad, ki ha shochad ye aver an ene, hachamim vi salef divre. And you shall not rest judgment, and you shall not favor faces, and you shall not take a bribe, for a bribe blinds the eyes of the wise and perverts the words of the righteous. I have tate in blue and visalef in green because these are the two bad things that can happen to justice. The first one is from the root nata, and one of the first times you see that is at the Red Sea when Moses stretches out his hand and his rod over the sea. That's nata. It can also mean to pervert. Salaf means to subvert or overturn. You don't see that word as often as nata. My name is Ann Voiles, and I've been studying uh, the Hebrew for about four years. And um, as Peter says, I uh, began with uh, Ben Gigi's uh, Hebrew transliteration Bible. And uh, then also looked at a lot of different sources. Um, there was a Zola Levitt book. Um, and, um, you know, like you said, just kind of being a tank and working through it word by word. And, um, 
you know, studying as many sources as I can in order to um, truly understand the meaning of the words. Zadek, Zadek, Tir Dof, Lama'an, Tihye, Veyarshta, It, Haaretz, Asher Adonai Elohecha, Noten Lach. Um, justice, justice, you will pursue in order that you will live and you will inherit the land that the Lord your God gives to you. Okay, I've got the Tavs, three Tav prefixes in red and one Kaf suffix in red. Who wants to tell me what those are? Uh, the Tav in each of those cases is... Um, Second masculine singular. The last word, the lach, the kaf, the shva, that'd be a second feminine singular. And it's a curious thing because the context is masculine, but the Masoretes, even when it's it should be masculine, the Masoretes have put in the vowels, which Chris is right, that's the feminine form. So I don't really know why it's that way. I have to ask Danny Bengigi sometime. Hi, my name is Vani, and um, I've been doing this for almost four years. And I tried to study before that on my own and would think it's too hard, and I would quit and back and forth until we started having our, our class that Peter started teaching using Danny Bengigi's. Um, and I've just kept up with it, and currently how I'm studying, I'm using a Hebrew, um, it's a book on Kindle, it's a Hebrew, it's a whole Bible, and it's, um, it's in Hebrew and English for the Tanakh, and it's in Greek and English for the uh, Brit Hadashah. And I don't care about learning the Greek. You can take that out later. Um, <laughs> um, so I I commute to work, so I take the Kindle because it's really light, and I can study Hebrew back and forth as I'm commuting. And I'm also part of an online um, class that's on Holy Language Institute. It's on holylanguage.com if you want to look that up. And it's really awesome, very excellent Hebrew teaching. Lo tita lacha ashera kul eitz eitzel mizbeach Adonai Elohecha asher ta ase lach. You shall not plant an asherah of any kind of tree beside the altar of the Lord your God which thou shalt make thee. I've got tita in red there, and that's the root nata, to plant. If you're familiar with the song I'll Call Ele by Naomi Shemer, there is a verse which says, Alna ta'akur natua, and that's please do not uproot that which has been planted. Shalom, my name is Chris. I've been studying Hebrew for about two years. Uh, the f first year, I was studying with Peter and doing some other work on my own. Finally, I decided I need a dedicated program, and there's lots of different programs out there. Uh, there's uh, Dr. Danny Bengigi, for example, and many, many others. Uh, my recommendation, just take a look at the various programs, and you got to find one that's a good fit for you based on uh, how much time you have available, um, cost, of course, and, and your personality type. For me, I chose Hebrew University in Jerusalem, Israel, uh, Israeli Institute of Biblical Studies, 30 weeks long, and they break it up, their course program, into five semesters. So uh, it's online, so you meet with an instructor, and other classmates, uh, one hour a week, and uh, you spend an hour with the instructor and other students, you go over vocabulary, uh, actual 
lesson itself and if you have a question you can ask the instructor and then afterwards there's more homework to do uh, for me I needed my personality type I just needed that structure a little, a little gentle pressure and here's some examples you're gonna spend an hour or two per day virtually every day for years you're not going to learn it just 45 minutes on a church or a Shabbat weekend. You can learn some basics, but then you got to keep studying every day of the week. Do a little something, and it'll add up. It'll build up for you. Uh, read, like my uh, instructor says, read Hebrew. That was our summer school assignment. Read Hebrew every day. So... I try to read one chapter out of the Tanakh in Hebrew out loud. Out loud is important. That way you're working on your tongue-eye coordination. You can hear it. You can see it. And you're going to find at first it's slow, it's hard. But then as you continue month after month reading the Hebrew out loud, it's going to get a little bit faster, a little bit easier. You're going to get a little bit more accurate. Another idea that I use, use 3 by 5 index cards to help you remember the words, the grammar rules, or any other little things you want to remember. I have a stack, probably, I don't know, hundreds of 3 by 5 index cards. Wow. <laughs> yes. And then another idea I use is I use a dry erase board to practice writing the letters and the words and the different rules because you can write it over and over and erase and write it again and erase and just that repetition 10, 20, 100 times if that's what it takes before you finally get it. So that's what I'm doing to study Hebrew. Mm. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> There. It's all you get. Give him the shortest verse. <laughs> all right. Now, with Catherine starting out, start her out with this. This is a, what do you call this? Yod. A yod. A yod is a hand. <laughs> and if you ever see pictures of the rabbis, they have this pointy stick thing to read in the Torah scroll. This is what they're using, a yod. And this is a real deal Israeli Yad. I use it. All right, here we go. Velo takim laka matzeva asher sa ne Adonai hello heka. Neither shall thou set thee up a pillar which the Lord thy God hates. So having read there, takim which is the root kum, to arise, stand. And you see that in Ruth, chapter 1, verse 6, vatakan hi bechaloteha. Then she arose, Ruth, with her daughters-in-law. In this song, which says kumi, and kumi is a command to a woman. Kumi ori, arise, shine. Take a close look at this because... One of the students here will be tested on this at the end of this class. Lo tizbach ladonai elohecha shor vase asher yihye vo mum kol devar ra ki to avat adonai elohecha hu. I've got to avat in red there, and that means abomination. Do not sacrifice to Hashem your God a bull or a sheep which has in it a blemish, moom is blemish, or anything bad, any evil thing. For it is an abomination to Hashem, your God. Uh, he, his last word there, who is he? That's an abomination, the, the animal with a blemish in it. There's to'eva, abomination. And this is the first times it's used in Tanakh. It's for the Egyptians to eat with Hebrews is an abomination. Remember when Joseph reveals himself to his brothers. Being a shepherd is an abomination to the Egyptians. 
The Israeli sacrifices, Moses said they had to go out into the wilderness because their sacrifices would be an abomination to the Egyptians. Homosexuality is an abomination. And in general, the practices of the Canaanites, the land that they're going in to possess. And many of those are covered in the next verses of this Torah portion. Ki yimatse vekirbecha be'achar she'arecha asher Adonai Elohecha noten lach ish o isha asher ya'asem et hara be'ene Adonai Elohecha la'avor berito. For if there is found in your midst and another of your gates which Hashem your God has given to you, a man or woman which has done evil in the eyes of Hashem your God to provoke his covenant or to transgress his covenant. Good job. And that Be'ene Adonai Elohecha. Who knows what that word structure is called? Be'ene Adonai Elohecha is a construct chain. Vayalech Vayavod Elohim Acharim Vayish Tahu Lachem Velashemesh O Layareach O Lechol Tseva Hashamaim Asher Lo Ziviti. And he has come and served other gods and bowed down to them or to the sun or to the moon or to all the host of the heavens that I have not commanded you. That word in red, vayishtachu, bow down to or worship, the root is chava and the verb form is hishtaf which is very unusual. In fact, I heard this is the only verb that ever gets conjugated that way. I don't know if that's true, but that's very rare. So there's the root chava, to declare or show, and see it's consecutive in Strong's with chava, the name for E, life giver. Vahu gad lecha vashamata vadarashta hetev vahine Emet na nachon hadavar ne esta hato eva hazot be Israel. And it be told thee, and thou hear it, then shalt thou inquire diligently and behold if it is true and the thing certain that such an abomination is wrought in Israel. I've got ne'esta in red there because the root is asa, to do or to make, but the noon prefix makes it nephil form. So it is done. This thing is done in Israel and has the feminine ending because the next word in orange Hato Aiva is a feminine noun. Vaho Zeta et ha ish ha hu o et ha isha ha he a share a su et hadavar ha ra haza el sha vreka et Ha ish o et ha isha u sakhal tam ba vanim va me tu. Then shall thou bring forth that man or that woman who has done this evil thing unto thy gates, even the man or the woman, and thou shalt stone them with stones that they die. So who can tell me why the words in blue, et ha'ish ha'hu, and the words in green, et ha'isha ha'hi, why one ends in ha'hu and one ends in ha'hi? Well, the first one, et ha'ish ha'hu, is masculine, and the second, et ha'isha 
how he is speaking of a woman, so it's feminine. Today's video at the end of this lesson is going to be Elon Gold, a Jewish comedian, and his seven-year-old daughter talking about three words, me, who, and he. And I think you'll really enjoy it. And you'll learn it a little bit better if you watch the video about 500 times. Arpi shenaim aidim o shalosha aidim yumat hamet. Lo yumat arpi ed echad. On the mouth of two witnesses or three witnesses, he shall die, the one sentenced to death. He shall not die on the mouth of one witness. The word in blue, yumat, and the word in green, hamet, are both from the same root, mot, to die. In blue, yumat is hofal, passive causative. So it shall be done to him. He shall be caused to die, or we would say put to death. And then the second one is hamet. It sounds like a noun, the one who is dead or the one who is to die, but it's a participle, and that's using a verb as an adjective, the participle form hamet. The Young's literal says, he who is dead, put to death, and the ESV says, the one who is to die shall be put to death. Yad ha'edim tihye bo varishona laha mito. Veyad kol ha'am ba'a harona uvi arta hara mikirbecha. The hand of the witnesses shall be the first to put them to death, and the hand of all the people afterwards, and you will purge the evil from your midst. In red, I have lahamito, and that's the root again, mot, to die. And here it's the hethal infinitive form. Again, cause to die, so put to death. And both the Young's literal and the ESV both translate that as to put him to death. The Vav suffix makes it him, put him to death. Now, can someone tell me why I've got Yad, then the prefix Tav, and the suffix Na all in blue? W the word Yad is feminine. That's why it has the Tav um, prefix, which is feminine, and the na suffix, which is feminine. And then also the veyad in green and the ba'acharona, same thing. The feminine yad and then the na is referring back to that after then the hand of all the people. Going to look at the last two verses today for us in this Torah portion. Verse 18 and then just the first few words of verse 19. Vehaya. Cheshivto al kise mamlachto vechatav lo et mishne hatora hazot al sefer milifne hakohanim halevim. It's talking about the king in Israel here. And it shall be when he sits on the throne of his kingdom and he shall write for himself a copy, that's Mishnah, is a copy of this Torah in a book or on a book before the priests, the Levites. And then the part of the next verse, Vehaita imo vekara vo kol yame chayav. And it shall be with him, and he shall read of it all the days of his life. So God wants even the king to be intimately aware of Torah. M write his own copy and read it every day. Can somebody tell me why haita is feminine? Why is haita the feminine form? Haya is masculine, but haita is feminine. What's it referring to? Uh, the word vahaita is feminine because it refers back to the Torah, which is a feminine noun. All right, now can somebody tell me why Imo has the vav suffix on the end and what it's referring to. It's just referring to Let me make a comment, though, because yeah. this verse always makes me think of King Solomon, who was supposed to do this, and he may have written a copy, but I doubt that he read it every day because he wouldn't have gotten off track if he had read his Torah every day. Okay, Imo. 
with him, and that's referring to the king. The king needs to have the Sefer Torah with him and read it. Okay, who can tell me why vo has the vav suffix? Vo is referring back to Sefer, which is a masculine word. So it shall be with him is feminine, referring to the Torah, but he shall read it is now referring to the Sefer because it's masculine. All right, remember earlier I said there's going to be a test, and here it is, and Vani is volunteering. Kumi ori kiva orech uk vod Adonai alaych zalach. Arise, shine, for your light shall come, and the glory of the Lord shall be risen upon you. Good job. <laughs> And now the Avinu and our closing video. Avinu Shabash Shamaim Yit Kadesh Simcha Yit Barek Mal Kutka Rezonka Yie Asu Bash Shamaim U Vaaret Vatit Ting Lach Menu Tamidit U Machol La Nu Achat Totenu Kaasher Anach Nu Amo Khalim La Kho Tim La Nu Va Al Tavi Anu Li De Nis Sai No Nis Sayon Va Sham Renu Mikal Ra Amen. Next week is Torah portion Kitetse, beginning with Deuteronomy chapter 21, verse 10. Now we'll watch the video on three words me, who, and he. And until next time, and Torah portion Kitetse, we all say to you Shalom! Shalom. Okay, uh, are you ready for your Hebrew lesson? Yep. Good. Um, we start with three words, me, who, and he. Those are English words. No, it's Hebrew. Me? Is who. I don't know. I'm telling you, me is who. You are who? No, me is. Who? Me. Is who? Yes. Okay, so who is you? No, who is he? How should I know? Because I said it, who is he? Who is he? Yes. Who? Me. Is he? Is who? He is who? He is she. Who is she? He is. Don't you mean he was she? No, he is she. Who? Me. You were a she? No. What's love? No. I'm asking you, what is love? No. You don't want to answer? I just did. You said no? Yes. Yes is love? No. Yes is the opposite of love. The opposite of love is high. No. What's the opposite of love? Ken. Who's Ken? Who is he? Ken is he? Ken is yes. And love is high? No. Love is no? Ken. So what's high? 18. And we say hi. Ken is yes and low is what? No, low is no and ma is what? Ma is she? He is she. Your mom is a he? No, ma is what? I don't know, I never met the woman. Okay, you know what, uh, maybe Ibu is not for you. No, I think I got this. Me is who, who is he and he and she? Tov. Died. Who died? Not died, died. Who, me? Me, who? I know, but it's died. Enough. Just say until it dies. Enough. Not until it dies? Ken. Ken does? Ken is in yes. I'm telling you what dies. It means enough. Well, why do you just say so? Please, that's it. I can't do this anymore, okay? Okay, die. Enough. No, let's be in English. <laughs>